Now that we understand the basics of servo motors and the thermal properties and their speed torque curves after the last three episodes and discussing it, now we get to kind of get into some of the fun part of really figuring out where the rubber meets the road and how the problems arise. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Reach out to us at the email address and website here. I hope this helps. So the performance questions we're going to be talking about today is, you know, why is my motor overheating? Why, do I don't, why don't I get as much speed as I should? Why don't I get as much torque as I should? And why did my motor burn up when it's only supposed to be operating in the continuous region of the curve? But at first, there are definitely some steps you need to take in order to make sure some of the more easily to resolve issues aren't taken care of first. And that's check your program. Are you actually commanding the speed that you think it should be? And check the drive program because there are some drives that will actually uh, cap the torque output to the continuous torque to keep you from accidentally burning up the motor during the tuning and initial programming and configuration. And double, triple, and quadruple check your sizing. What assumptions did you make that perhaps are not accurate? Double check those and triple and quadruple check them. So why is your motor overheating? Well, remember the assumptions here, down here that I talked about in previous episodes. Uh, your motor is overheating because you're putting too much power in and it's not able to dump all that power out. So typically that is going to be when you're over the continuous region. That's above this line here. But now you may think that you're below this line, the continuous line. However, how is the motor getting rid of the heat? What is it mounted to? How much airflow does it get? Uh, what is the ambient temperature? Maybe the ambient temperature that you're starting at is higher than what you assume. Uh, if you are starting a motor at 20 degrees ambient Celsius, that's room temperature, and the motor is going to burn up at 110, that's 90 degrees differential that you can heat the motor up before it burns up. But if it's at the ambient temperature of 40 degrees C, then you only have a temperature rise of 70 degrees before it burns up. So that's less power you can put into it. Um, uh, gearboxes are not the greatest heat sinks. A motor mounted to a big metal plate is a much better heat sink than a gearbox. So those are some different things that have to be looked at in order to understand why it's overheating. Uh, is the power requirement going in more than you are expecting it to be? Again, that goes back to the sizing. Why don't I get as much speed as I should? Uh, one of the more typical ones here is the bus voltage. You may size a motor by looking at this uh, 240 volts AC curve out here, but then you're only using one phase of that three phase power and you're only using 208. Well, that's this curve here. So you're not going to get beyond this, uh, this curve to get to the higher voltage. Um, so are you using the correct voltage? The other thing to look at here is this slant. If you are taking more torque than you think and you're hitting into this line here, uh, this is below 4,000 RPM if it takes that much torque to get there. Uh, but maybe you were hoping to get to 4,500 RPM. But you don't forget that you have some torque in order to get there and the torque reduces at the higher speeds. So that is something to be aware of, but it's often tied to the voltage. People will size it for 240 volts AC, but then maybe they only use 110 volts AC, and that cuts your speed in half right there. Why don't I get as much torque as I should? I mentioned this before, but sometimes the drives are actually undersized for the motor. So let's say a motor gets a maximum torque at uh, 2 amps but the drive itself only puts out one amp. Well, that means you're going to get a reduced amount of torque because it doesn't have as much current available to power the motor as it could. One of my favorites is, why did my motor burn up when it's only operating in the continuous region of the curve? There's so many things going on here. Uh, why do you think it's only supposed to be operating in the continuous part of the curve? Did you check your sizing and all that? 
Have you looked at any mechanical jams to make sure that the motor isn't working harder than it's supposed to be? Or mechanical stiction or you know, sp spots where the motor might be uh, running up or to a, against a rough spot in the mechanics. Um, I had one time where a customer was so sure that they didn't have any mechanical problems and I went out there and, and watched it and it turned out that Sure enough, there was a mechanical jam, but it only really showed up as a problem when it hit that mechanical jam and then the operators went off to their brake because by the time the operators came back, the motor had had a chance to heat up over time because it was sitting there working hard and then as it heat, heated up over their brake, when they came back, and then it would fault out. It would either fault out just before the brake ended or just after they got back when they tried to make their next move. And so I had to you know, prove to the customer that they were having a mechanical problem. It wasn't a motor performance issue. Now, what's particularly interesting about this, and this really happens every once in a while with uh, when there's operators who have the ability to reset uh, the, the drive, to reset the system in order to recover from a mechanical jam. If you go back to how I explained the thermal protections in the last episode, there is a time delay in from when the motor gets hot to when a thermistor or thermal switch can capture that uh, temperature increase. So usually the primary protection for the motor is the drive calculating that temperature increase. The problem is, is when the operator resets the drive to recover from the fault, that drive then starts back over at its uh, original assumption of what the ambient temperatures, you know, 20 degrees C, room temperature, for example, maybe 30 degrees Celsius. But maybe the motor has gotten hot up to 50 or 60 degrees. Well, if they reset it quickly enough and over and over again, the motor can go from, you know, 50 degrees to 60 degrees to 80 degrees to 100 degrees to 110 each time. Where, But in that same time frame, the heat transfer hasn't gotten through to the thermal switch or thermistor yet for that protection to kick in. It has to happen pretty quickly, but I have definitely seen that happen several different times where the motor gets hot and burns up before the thermal switch catches it. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. If you need any help, assistance, reach out to us at this email address and website here. Follow our hashtag motion control show. I hope this helps.